Hello everybody, so I wanted to do a video on camos again, and this time I want to look at the contrast between colours on a camouflage. And this is one of the really important factors, I think, in a camouflage on how well it works, but there's more to it. You can't simply say higher contrast camos are better, but for the most part I think they are. So, basically what I mean by contrast in camouflage is how much the colours differ from each other. So, in this flecton, the two colours that should be very obviously high contrast is the black, because... As I've said before, black isn't actually a good colour for camouflage, but at least in this example it shows, you know, it's looking totally different from the others. And the light green, that should be about centre frame at the moment. So, those two colours on here definitely look very different from the others. The brown, the reddish sort of rust brown, you could say, um, looks quite different as well. But you'll probably notice that the dark green doesn't particularly stand out against anything on the camouflage. Now... The reason that you want colour contrast on the camouflage is at a distance, the further away you get from the camouflage, the harder it is for the eye to actually pick out details in this camouflage. So, that means that what colours should look sort of obvious at close range might blur into other colours. So what I mean by that is if you had two shades of green quite similar to each other in a similar area on the camouflage, at a distance you might just see one big green blob. So that's an important thing to take note of. It's also, like I was saying before, about the macro and micro patterns. At a distance, you're not going to see the micro patterns, you're only going to see the macro patterns. So, basically, what you want with a camouflage is, at a distance, the colours are distinguishable enough that you actually get your proper colours in blobs. Now, you all know I like the Strictarn camouflage East Germany used. However, the disruptive pattern on Strictarn is so small that basically it only has a micro pattern that once you get too further away the camouflage will always blur into one colour now that's not good for hiding a human silhouette but what is good with um, strict arm is the shade of kind of green brown they used so if you're not familiar with it although strict arm again has varied depending on which company produced it in which year how faded it is examples or things like that Strict tarn is basically a kind of mix between coyote or coyote brown, coyote brown, and olive drab, and it's, so it's kind of a mix between it. So if you think of a bland green and a bland brown, strict tarn is somewhere in between, and that's why it works so well, because the colour is so boring in a sense, the eye doesn't notice it very well, and so that it picks up ambient light very easily, which is another thing. High contrast cameras tend to not pick up ambient light as well. So what I mean by that is if you're stood in the woods and there's the lighting's a bit green because the sunlight's filtering through lots of leaves. Some camouflages like strict on are very good at then looking the similar shade of green to everything else. Some camouflages with higher con contrast, not particularly flecked on, but we'll just use this for example because I've got it in my hand. Flecked on, for example, won't turn the colour of the environment as much, which means you can then look out of place. This is why I keep saying to people, for nighttime use, you do not need a dark camouflage or like black. Um, like a black jumpsuit or something. The reason being that, obviously, everything else around you is still the exact same colour it was earlier in the day. Leaves are still green and everything like that. The issue is there's just an absence of light, so you can't see it as well. So you still want to be the same colour as your surroundings. It's just the people viewing you won't be able to make out colour anywhere near as well, and everything's darker. It's not that, you know, everything around you is physically turned to a darker colour. So... That hopefully will make some sense to you about that. So, colour contrast is definitely good at a distance. Um, let me just get some other camos out while I've got ones hanging up here. So, this is what I think was a Zimbabwe camouflage, I mentioned it the other day. This is quite good in terms of colour contrast. You've basically got three or four colours on this, depending on how you look at it. You can see that there's brown, dark green, and like a tan or a beige and where the green and brown cross over in places you get an even darker green. So this is a really good camouflage in that sense that I think at a distance you'd start seeing solid colour blocks a lot more on this. Again I haven't had a chance to test this in the field but I think this would work well. Again the colours aren't intended for um, sort of northern European forests but I think they would work well enough there because none of these colours you know jump out at being um, particularly you know, vibrant to me. And as I said, I do like that there's no black in this camouflage or no white in this camouflage because it's actually got colours that seem to occur in nature rather than doing the annoying thing lots of camos do of trying to pick silly colours. So, another good example of a modern camo that follows these rules 
is um, Multicam or MTP, this is British MTP rather than Multicam. Very dark brown in it, but no actual black, and that's like a cream colour, not white. So, what you've got here is, you'll be able to see some colour contrast on this, I think, from a distance, the very dark brown and um, the white are the obvious ones. And obviously, some of the greens um, and some of the browns seem to be more contrasting than others. Now, again, this is a camouflage that's intended to work at close and long range, so you've got both micro and macro patterns, and you've got, in some areas, greater contrast than others between the colours. So, again, this should work fairly well for what it is. Well, it has worked very well when I've tested it. I still need to do a video, which I'll hopefully get round to now the weather's getting better, although we've had lots of rain today, um, of going out with somebody to do another camo test and wearing only MTP, because I want to see how good full MTP gear is. You know, not just the MTP trousers with a different shirt, but full MTP. So there you go. That's those camos. So... The point I'm certainly getting at with camouflage, though, is that I think for the most part, but not always, higher contrast between the colours is better, simply because I think at a distance and a lot of the time, higher contrast means that the eye will see the camouflage as you want it to be seen, because obviously, if you see the camouflage simply as its base colours, um, or, you know, you see all the greens as one green, and you see all the browns as one brown, for example, um, and the disruptive pattern isn't that good on the camo, you're going to see a big blob, and often when you see a big blob it's much easier to work out the human silhouette. So, to sort of sum up this video, yeah, I think contrast is very important on the camouflage. Have a look for something you want. Um, another thing I've not mentioned in this video I ought to say quickly is, if you wash camouflages a lot, and they've been exposed to sunlight a lot, they tend to fade. Some camos fade much faster than others, my Yugoslavian camo or Serbian camo, is not good for that. The um, kind of one that's, I think it's oak leaf camo they call it. Now that, the shame of that is it looks like it would have been a really good camo when it was new and I like the colours in it because it wasn't, you know, particularly um, obvious what some of the colours were, which is kind of great with it, but um, I've had people from Croatia and Serbia tell me that this camouflage tends to fade very quickly as well just because of the inks used. But that's another one of the camos the way where it's faded for me now when I try and use it as an actual camo it often falls short and it shouldn't do but again it's because the colors are faded it looks too pale now if you want a good example before I finish this video of a camo that really didn't work apart from a very few select places even though it's meant to work everywhere American UCP camo lots of people know it was ACU but I think that's actually army combat uniform but UCP universal camo pattern was the name of the thing so ACU UCP you know what, you know what I'm on about if I say both the gray camo the one that was shades of grey and I think maybe black. Yeah, that, that didn't work anywhere, did it? Except for grandma's sofa and maybe a quarry. And the issue with that being that, obviously, when you have almost one colour, and there's almost no contrast between that one colour, you're going to have a very hard time getting that to work in a lot of places. Again, if you want to use a universal camo, you kind of have to use shades of brown and green that are just very bland, because in lots of places you'll get shades of brown and green. In lots of places you won't have various shades of grey. So there you go. Um, I suppose you get 50 shades of grey in women's sort of cheap porn novels, don't you? But you don't get um, 50 shades of grey everywhere when you're trying to use your UCP camo. So that's what I'm getting at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video.